What's going on guys? So today we are out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we're taking a look at this really cool Keystone hideout. Now, this is a stick and tin unit, which means it's gonna have a wood frame with this kind of corrugated aluminum outside to it, but it's gonna ride on a steel chassis. But there's a lot of really interesting aspects about this RV I think you're gonna enjoy. Hang tight, I'll be right back. So starting up front, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So this is going to have a gross vehicle weight rating of 7,800 pounds. It's going to have a cargo capacity of 1,850 pounds. And the dry weight on this unit is going to be 5,910 pounds. So in my opinion, this is something that I would only tow behind a three-quarter ton truck. I would not put this behind most half-ton trucks. I say most because there are a few trucks that you could probably handle this type of weight. And when I say weight, I'm not specifically referring to that 7,800 pounds. There's a lot of pickup trucks that have a tow rating over that. It's the weight up here, and I think most people realize that. So if you factor in, let's just say roughly 7,500 pounds, because most people aren't going to load this thing up to the max, or even 7,000 pounds, and you take 10% of that, which is going to be on the back of your truck when it's dry, you're talking 700 pounds before you've added any of the additional weight. You throw a battery on here, you're going to be adding another 55 pounds. You throw two full propane cans, there's 100 pounds right there. And most people, again, once you start loading up the front with all your supplies, the bedroom with all your stuff inside of here, you're probably going to be adding three to four hundred pounds worth of weight on top of this so you're going to be well over probably i'm going to say probably about 1200 pounds at least resting on the back of your pickup truck then you have to factor in the weight of your hitch everybody in the truck which again if you have a family of four can add up very quickly to roughly six to nine hundred pounds worth of weight in the vehicle so you have to take let's just say 900 pounds plus the 1200 pounds that you're going to have back here and you can quickly understand why it's not the weight of the trailer, it's the weight on the back of your truck that's gonna make the most difference. Anyways, let's take a look inside of this RV, then we'll come back out and take a look at the outside. So this is a hideout by Keystone, and this is a 243 RB. This is gonna come with 200 watts worth of solar already on it. So all Keystone products now come with solar already equipped on it. You just have to look at the sticker to see specifically what package yours may have or the one you're looking at may have. This is going to have the cool screen assist right here for your screen door. Stepping inside, this is going to be kind of a, an interesting floor plan. It's kind of a mid-living room combined with kitchen. You have a front bedroom and then you have a rear bathroom. But we're going to start from the back and work our way up. So first and foremost, you have an absolutely huge shower in this unit. Very, very large for a travel trailer in this weight and size. The bathroom in general is just absolutely huge. Large enough that you can have dual vanities. They're both plastic basin sinks, so there's some cost cutting that goes into this. No medicine cabinet on the wall, which they could have probably put a medicine cabinet up there, but there's two mirrors. You have some storage underneath. Three drawers right here. Porcelain foot flush toilet. Has pleated blinds. It would have been nice to have blackout blinds. Uh, bathroom's not as big of a concern during the daytime, but at night, if you have the light on in here, pleated blinds are pretty easy to see through. And they're pleated blinds all the way throughout. So a lot of manufacturers have started putting blackout blinds in. You could probably put them in yourself, but it's always nice when you see an RV that has the blackout blinds already in place. You have a nice really long sofa that also turns into a bed. Your table is already in place here as well. Nice USB connections on this side of the sofa with a nice flat surface there for your coffee, your iPad, or whatever you put there. On this side, you have a sound bar. Your TV would go right here, and I believe it's a 40-inch TV. Huge countertop space all the way across here. You have a lot of storage here, and that is really nice. They actually put some roll-out drawers inside of your cabinetry. That is typically something you see on your much higher-end units. So that's cool to see that they put it on here. Three burner cooktop with oven. You have your road vac here as well, so you actually have an onboard vacuuming system. That's also really nice. You have a compact uh, contour microwave. So this unit is only equipped with one air conditioning system back here. I don't know if there's an optional second, only because I don't see a hole up here. And typically there'd be a hole or a sticker or something to kind of help point that out if there were a an option for a second unit. Right here, you have some cabinetry. You have your large plastic single basin sink right here, along with a uh, really interesting faucet that has this rotating head on it. 
Couple more drawers, more storage underneath here. Looks like it's for trash cans. On this side, you have a refrigerator. That's what was beeping a second ago, and this looks to be a 12 volt Norcold refrigerator. So that's nice. You have a sliding door here, which would take you into the bedroom. Queen size bed, a lot of room around the bed. Again, typically on travel trailers this size and this class, you don't really have a lot of room to get around your bed, but because it's only a queen size option in here, uh, you have your cabinets on the side here, it kind of squeezes the bed in, but they give you a lot of room in here, which is nice. And usually the biggest pain is this area behind the bed because it's hard to squeeze through there. Again, nice area. Even if they were gonna put just a few blackout blinds in, it'd be nice if they did it at least in the bedroom. Spot for your TV on the wall. Very cool. All right, let's take a look at the outside of this unit and uh, we'll also talk about the price. All right, before we get started, this unit's gonna have an MSRP of $35,999. Starting up front, this has a electric tongue jack, twin 20 pound propane cans, spot for two batteries. There's one on here currently. And this one's already prepped for weight distribution, which is interesting. So it's already got the weight distribution brackets attached to the side. This may be a sold unit, not sure. Up front here, you have your pass-through storage. There's the Kurt weight distribution hitch that's already back here. Maybe they're including it with this unit. It is prepped for Furion side view cameras. Here's the outside of your water heater, outside of your furnace. This is the vent hood on the other side of the interior vent above your stove. You need to keep that open if you want to vent that hot air out and keep it from recirculating. Here is an inverted outlet, so that's connected to your solar inverter. So you can actually power things out here off of the 200 watt panel up top. Cable connection if you wanna throw a TV out here. You can tie your dog up right here or use this as a bottle opener. You have electric stabilization jacks on the front and back of this unit, very nice. Outside shower, has a nice power awning with LED light strip beneath it. Four inch tubular bumper on the back, great place to store your sewer hose has a Lodestar spare tire back here. All LED lighting. It is prepped for a backup camera. This is where your 30 amp power cable is stowed. You have your sewer connections down here, both your gray and black tank. Tires are Lodestar tires all the way around, so it's not just the spare. The frame on this unit is not reinforced, which is kind of interesting. This is an eight inch I-beam frame, but it doesn't have the two reinforcement gussets for the shackle hangers. No upgraded suspension in between, but it is a rack and pinion slide on the single slide out. Coming over here, you have another gray tank right here, and that gray tank is specifically for the, uh, the sink in the kitchen. So you'll have the one in the back for the bathroom and the one right here for your kitchen. Fresh water connection, city water connection. The other side of your pass-through storage is right here. And again, side view Furion cameras. But what do you guys think about this unit? It's very cool. It's got a lot of elements that I like about it and a few elements that I are just kind of confusing. For instance, you know, I would probably substitute those little pull-out drawers underneath the cabinets in the living room or part of the kitchen, whichever you want to call it, for blackout blinds in the bedroom or blackout blinds in the living room and bedroom. Um, I probably would have done a few other little things, maybe a front cap. I don't know if this one has a front cap, but the other hideouts that I'm looking at don't look like they have a cover for the propane tanks. Um, aside from that, you know, you get quite a bit with this unit. It's, it's certainly a, a well-equipped unit for what it is, and it's relatively small. Um, again, three-quarter ton is ideal for towing something like this. There are a few half tons out there. You just kind of keep an eye on the combined tongue weight and payload inside of your vehicle because, again, you know, even if you're conservative and you say 1,000 pounds on the back of your vehicle, well, if you have six to 800 pounds worth of people inside of your truck, you know, 50% of the half ton trucks out there have a capacity, total payload capacity of under 1500 pounds. So you'll be maxing out your truck. So again, I just say this because I want you guys to be safe as possible on the road. I don't want you to say, you know, this is a truck I have, I'm gonna tow the biggest trailer I can tow, realizing that you might not be factoring or accounting for certain numbers that are gonna to add to your payload capacity or at least take away from your payload capacity. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.